In this video, we will talk about how an IP packet does go through some transformation and changes while there are source NATs and destination NATs in the way. In this busy slide here, uh, which looks complex, but it's actually not, I will try to give you an overview of the tables involved. I've included the MAC address table for the switches, the packet formation or the packet table that gets originated from your computer in your home office or your home. And when it reaches your first hop router or gateway, which is the router in your home office or home, how does that packet looks like, and so on and so forth until it reaches the destination of your packet, which could be an internet address like youtube.com or anything of that nature that you're trying to reach through HTTPS or HTTP. Now, <clears throat> for reference, you have these private addresses that are not available in the public internet. They are not routable, they are not recognized, therefore you cannot use them in the internet or in, in the internet cloud. You can only use addresses other than the 10 range, the 172.16 and 31 range and the 192.168 range. Everything besides this is called public IP and uh, therefore they could be, they're available to be routed in the public internet. Now, with that said, let's see. In this slide, basically, I've included the three addresses and how they go through the transformation when you send a packet towards an internet destination. So with your computer sitting in your home office, your computer MAC address, your computer IP address, and the gateway it's gonna be configured with for the first hop, uh, and then the three addresses, which is the application address, the IP address, and the MAC address. The MAC address is really significant within the given segment. So this would be your internal segment to your house or your home office. This would be your second segment that MAC address are significant for. And, and every point to point link would be considered a segment, a local area a broadcast segment. Um, that the MAC addresses would be significant for. But, you know, if you pay attention to the MAC addresses, they're pretty straightforward. The switch MAC table basically will tell you the source port and the source MAC address is coming from port one. In this case, it's port one here and port two. So the MAC table will, in the switch would essentially tell you that MAC address 101 lives off port one. MAC address 102 lives off port 2, and that's straightforward stuff on a, on a layer 2 switch. When it comes to the layer 3, layer 3 gets a little complicated and at, at layer 4, so this is essentially your layer 4, this is your layer 3, and this is your layer 2. Layer 2 is pretty straightforward, but now when it comes to the transformation of your layer 3 packet, when you type in an address like HTTPS, which essentially means 443, that's a layer four address, application address, port number. So when the packet gets originated with that HTTPS address, your application source is a random number, the source address, it gets generated randomly, and the destination is a well-known address, 443, at which the application here is listening. That packet would obviously have a layer three address, which is the source address of your computer and a destination address, which is going to be the address of the URL that you're typing in your browser. In this case, we're using the Google DNS, which is 8888. So once you get the DNS resolution done, you get the IP packet formed with the source and the destination addresses. And again, the MAC addresses are pretty simple. If you see how the table actually gets the MAC addresses swapped, uh, swapped 
here on the way going this way and on the way back, coming back, it's uh, a good reference for you. But with the IP packets, it gets tricky because when the packet hits the gateway, usually a small home office, now I'm not talking about the enterprises or large enterprises, which probably would be using publicly routed addresses uh, on this segment or even inside their network. Uh, a typical home office or small office would use, you know, private address spaces uh, inside their network and even at the first hop of the service provider, which is the case here in, in this demonstration. I'm using a private address space uh, that this service provider one is using to connect to their users. Uh, and if you check your home router, you will probably see a 192.168 address or even a 10 dot address or even a 172.16 address. Anyway, all of those are private addresses. The public addresses would begin in the internet. So your router connects to the service provider, the first hop, uh, and then that source address, when you generate that packet with an address of 10.1.1, goes to your router, which would essentially do a source NAT. That source NAT essentially is changing your source address to its own outside interface address or any other address that it's configured with. So your source net would be performed only on the inside interfaces. And yeah, you will configure that uh, on the router or the device that's on the edge, whether which interface is inside and which interface is outside. So in this case, this interface is inside, it's going to do a source NAT, a source network address translation from your original address 10111 to 192.168.11. And that is, here's the uh, table for this router. Application address stays the same, 1234, destination 443. And your source address gets changed to 192.168.11, this guy right here. Now, on the way back, this inverse function happens, and the, the inverse function essentially means that when you're changing the, translating the source NAT, source address, on the way back, it's just gonna swap that with the destination address to the original address. Even though you can call this the destination address translation, it is not. It's just performing an inverse function off the source NAT because it's one flow. It's one flow for the packet going towards the destination and, and the reply coming back. Now, once the trans packet reaches your first hop, it gets translated for the source address. The destination needs to be the same. It goes to the service provider. Now the service provider is using private addresses on this segment. So he's got to do a source NAT again before he puts the packet on a public internet because the public internet only understand public addresses. Anything with this range, the public internet will not understand. So this service provider is gonna do a source NAT again and then change this address, the source address that it's coming from to an address that it's got configured on this interface or any other pool addresses that it's got. In this case, simply put, it's gonna change the source of this guy to this source NAT function is performed and an inverse function will be performed when this packet gets a reply back. Now, when the packet goes forward, now it's got a source address of 1111. See how it got changed from 10111 to 192.168.11 to 111. Two source NATs happening. Now it enters the public internet with an IP, source IP of 1111. Now everybody in the internet knows how to get back to this address. If it was a private address, the public internet would not know how to get to it. So therefore it changes the private to public, the destination stays the same, application addresses stays the same, and you can see how the MAC addresses are also changing between each segment. The packet goes to the next router or service provider too. And so this guy is not doing any source NAT or any destination NAT. So he's gonna take the source as it is 
and look at the destination. It's going to say, yeah, I know where it is and forward the pat packet to the correct router. And this router, which is most likely a data center in this case, where this server or an application is sitting and behind this, you know, uh, this router or this load balancer, which typically would be the case for large websites that websites are, you know, sitting behind a load, load balancer. Um, but in, to make it think, make things simple, this router is configured with this public address. And this router now would do a destination NAT. So what is a destination NAT is basically converting or changing the, des the destination address to a internally mapped address. So in this case, in this specific example, we're changing the address from 888 to 10111. Now, if you notice, I've deliberately used the same address uh, of your source computer and the destination computer or server because it really doesn't matter because you're doing source and destination nets and everything is getting routed perfectly. If it was a flat L3 network where there is no source and destination networks and you're doing everything plain routing, then you this would not work. You would have to have unique addresses and unique net networks. Plus in this case, you know, it's everything is getting changed and translated therefore just to make the point clear that same addresses are most likely getting used that you have configured on your computer. They are probably configured somewhere inside the data centers or somewhere in somebody else's house as well, where you're communicating with them. So in this case, the public address youtube.com or google.com gets translated into a private address. And that private address would get converted into 10.1.1.1 in this case for this router or for this gateway or application server. And then the packet moves with the source address, which was originally changed here, that is no longer changed on the destination site. So when the packet reaches the server, it comes with the source address of this guy, the public address, and the destination address of itself. So it says, yes, I am 10.1.1.1. I am listening on port 443, therefore I'm going to respond back. And when it responds back, it forms a packet with the destination of 1111, which is this guy, which is publicly routed, remember? And the source would be now the port, the application where it was listing, and the destination is your random application uh, source address. So things get inversed here. And the destination source address is again 10111. And when the packet reaches the router, the edge router, the data center edge router, it performs the inverse function again for what it did originally to the request. Now it's responding to that same request. So instead of doing a destination NAT, it basically does a source NAT, but it's not called source NAT. It's basically changing what it did, redoing what it uh, changed. Uh, and therefore now the source comes back to its original form, which is 888. And your destination stays the same. Application source and destination stays the same. Packet moves back to the service provider. Everything stays as it is. You can notice how these addresses are changed now, are swapped. And then the packet comes to the service provider one with the original uh, second source net. And when it reaches, it actually does the inverse function again and it changes the destination to or the original destination source that it did the source net on. And it keeps the source at it as it is, sends the packet back to the home router or home office router. Inverse function performs, gets performed here again. And the destination address is reset to the original packets source. And therefore, the, the source stays the same from all the way here. And when the packet comes back to the computer, which originated the request, the source is the public IP address and the destination is the private IP address, which where it started with. So this kind of gives you a good uh, high level 
uh, overview and will help you understand how the source nets and destination nets work in, in, in this kind of a scenario. This is like a very popular uh, standard. It, it's basically a de facto standard now where you're doing much, much of the source nets and destination nets for any packet going from a private network to a public network, but still getting changed in its addressing and mapping uh, over, over the network, over the internet. And uh, that's how all of your IP packets are getting translated, source netted and destination netted, netted uh, going and coming back. So I hope this kind of gives you a good overview of how the MAC addresses is specific to the segments and how IP packet is getting transformed all the way from the original point of uh, start to the destination and then all the way back, uh, what happens to it. Let me clear this up so that if you wanna take a snapshot of this, you can and uh, keep this as a reference. Hope this helps.